Today we are going to talk about a neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock is a condition in which the vascular capacity increases. The capacity of the blood vessels to accum accommodate the blood increases so much. And the, the, the return of the blood, the venous return decreases so much. So it basically produces a, uh, a condition like shock. Now there is no blood loss. The, the blood is in the system. But the capacity of the blood vessels increases so much that there is pooling of blood. Now you can see this is the normal circulatory system here is the heart here is the, we have the blood vessels the the heart is basically receiving the deoxygenated blood it is being pumped into the lungs which, where it gets oxygenated and then returns back to the heart the heart is pumping the blood vessels through the arteries and then it returns through uh, through the veins now here in this diagram you see that the pumping cap, uh, sorry the the the, the the capacity of the blood uh, vessels to accommodate the blood increases so much. Now here the capacity of the blood vessels is very small. A very small amount of blood is being accum accommodated here in these vessels. But here in these uh, blood vessels, the, the tone of the blood vessels have been lost. The tone of the blood vessels have been lost and the capacity of the blood vessels has increased so much. The amount of blood that has pooled in this system has increased. Now, there are some conditions which basically lead to the loss of tone. Now, the tone basically comes through sympathetic nerves from the brain and the spinal cord. When there is damage to these uh, these nerves, the sympathetic nerves are damaged the, or the vasomotor center in the brain which is sending these signals to the blood vessels. If those centers are damaged or the, the nerves which are basically bringing the, the signals to the blood vessels and the heart, if they are damaged, then this condition develops. That is the neurogenic shock. And in this type of shock, there is loss of tone. There is loss of tone in the blood vessels and due to which the, capaci the capacity of the blood vessels increases so much that it accommodates a large amount of blood. It accommodates a large volume of blood. Blood starts uh, accumulating in the peripheries and which basically decreases the filling pressure, which basically decreases the mean systemic filling pressure. So the mean systemic filling pressure decreases which ultimately leads to decreased venous return which ultimately leads to decreased venous return. Now small amount of blood is coming um, or returning back to the heart due to which the pumping of the heart decreases. There is decrease in preload so the pumping of the heart decreases which ultimately leads to decreased cardiac output decreased cardiac output and hence the arterial pressure falls. The arterial pressure falls. When the arterial pressure falls, then the supply of the nutrients like oxygen, glucose, sodium, potassium, calcium, etc. The supply of the nutrients to the tissues decreases. So what happens in the neurogenic shock is that there is loss of tone in the blood vessels due to which the capacity of the blood vessels to accommodate blood increases. Large amount of blood accommodate in the uh, blood vessels and it, it basically presents like shock. It presents like shock. Although no hemorrhage has occurred, no blood loss has occurred. The blood is in the system, but it is very difficult for it to return because there is decrease in the mean systemic filling pressure. There is decrease in the venous return and hence there is decreased cardiac output and decreased arterial pressure. All of these factors ultimately lead to shock. Now, the factors which ultimately causes the neurogenic shock, they include in the normal conditions. Basically, they include deep general anesthesia. Now, if anesthetics are given to a patient, especially general anesthesia, then it it can sometimes depress the vasomotor center and if the vasomotor center which are basically sending the signals to the blood vessels if this is, if this center is basically depressed then signals will not be coming to the blood vessels and the tone of the blood vessels will be lost and this normal capacity blood vessels will convert into uh, blood vessels with, with huge capacity and which will accommodate a large amount of uh, blood and the, the, the mean systemic filling pressure and the venous return will fall due to pooling of blood the blood has basically pooled in the blood vessels now, the second thing is spinal anesthetic. Now, sometimes the uh, anesthetics are given in the spinal region. But if these anesthetics uh, go upward and if they uh, somehow depress the vasomotor center or the sympathetic nerves, then the sympathetic nerves are depressed and the supply of the sympathetic um, nerve to the, ves uh, to the vessels basically decreases. The tone of the uh, blood vessels is lost. The blood vessels dilate and due to dilation, pooling of blood occurs in the whole condition. The neurogenic shock basically develops. So deep general anesthesia and spinal anesthesia can cause neurogenic shock. Another condition is basically brain damage. Now brain damage can occur in trauma and it can also occur in uh, hypotension. Now initially, if initially when there is a decreased amount of blood to the vasomotor center, there is increase in the sympathetics and there is increased tone in the blood vessels and the, basically it helps in returning the blood to the heart. But if there is 
severe shock and the blood supply to the brain uh, remains low for a very long time like more than 5 to 10 minutes the blood supply to the vasomotor center in the brain remains low for like more than 10 to 5 minutes due to hemorrhage or due to any condition then it ultimately will lead to damage of the vasomotor center the vasomotor center which are basically sending signals to the vessels in the form of sympathetics that center is basically damaged so it no longer can maintain the vessels tone and the tone of the blood vessels is lost and then this condition develops due to the increasing capacity and pooling of blood and decreasing venous return and decreasing arterial pressure and ultimately neurogenic shock basically develops. Now another condition which can cause neurogenic shock is damage or trauma of the spinal cord. Now if the spinal cord is damaged then it can also basically lead to um, it can also lead to neurogenic shock because uh, this, the nerves which are basically supplying uh, the sympathetic tone to the blood vessels, they are damaged. When they are damaged, there is no uh, sympathetic innervation of the blood vessel and then this condition develops again in which the capacity of the blood vessels increases and pooling of blood occurs and a condition of shock develops. So that's all about the neurogenic shock. This shock develops due to increasing capacity of the blood vessel and the increasing capacity of the blood vessel is due to loss of sympathetic tone. And this loss of sympathetic tone can develop due to trauma, injury of spinal cord, or it can be due to a deep general anesthesia, it can be due to spinal anesthesia, or it can be due to brain damage. So that's a brief uh, lecture about neurogenic shock. Thanks a lot for watching the video.